We had a 48-year-old gentleman presented to our gastroenterologist with three-month history of diarrhea and had three endoscopy procedures done at our local government hospital. The patient was known to have asthma, uh, was a social smoker, single and worked as a teacher. So his endoscopy findings in October 2018 revealed that he had a hernia, he had reflux esophagitis, gastritis, a cecal lesion or possibly Crohn's disease um, and his H. pylori was positive. His blood tests revealed a normal full blood count. The renal profile and liver profiles were normal. Um, the TB quantiferon test was done and it was negative. So the H. pylori eradication therapy was started. The patient came for review and he completed all his medications but still had diarrhea. Again, endoscopy was done in November 2018 and no changes were noted. The histology of the previous endoscopy was reported as suggestive of IBD. In March 2019, the patient came to the emergency department with fever of 38.1 degrees, abdominal pain and diarrhea. He was seen by the gastro consultant and admitted. Endoscopy procedure again revealed no new findings. The CT abdomen revealed diffuse circumferential bowel thickening at the distal distending colon. So the impression was a relapse of Crohn's disease with predominant colonic involvement. His blood test revealed a normal full blood count. His renal and liver functions were normal. The CRP was noted to be extremely high at 52.6, so he was started on IV ciprofloxacin. So there was no growth detected from the blood cultures. The colon ulcer histology reports was suggestive of CMV colitis. The patient was then referred to our infectious disease consultant. He was started on IV gencyclovir and fluconazole. He was treated as infective diarrhea. A few days later, the patient was discharged. In April 2019, the patient again returned to the emergency department with fever, abdominal pain and diarrhea. The ID consultant saw him and treated him as CMV colitis this time. The Kaistat GI panel was ordered. The GI panel results showed EPEC and Entamoeba histolytica were positive. The Western blot assay results showed HIV-1 positive. The patient was treated with metronidazole antibiotics and a combination of antiretroviral medications. Subsequently, all his symptoms resolved and he was well on regular follow-up. This is an example of how specific syndromic testing assisted clinicians in identifying certain pathogens that are pathonomic to specific chronic diseases. Kyogen. Sample to insight.